Come on. And close. Now you do this for hours and hours and hours and hours a day for years, and that's why my hands are shaking. And it is nerve damage from working these pliers. Specifically ulnar nerve. We were going to be working on follower into follower, making one of my followers into a paperclip figurine today, but their schedule apparently didn't work and they wanted to catch the live, so we're moving that to tomorrow. So today we are chainmail. Try that one again. And this is a simple little European Ford one weave, but it's just very tiny, tiny rings, which makes it very strong, damage resistant, and heavy. That is solid steel. About 17 gauge. It varies a little bit on, you know, what manufacturer you buy the paper clips from, but in general, it's 17 gauge galvanized steel. So it's very strong. I think it's got a 150 pound weight load. I counted these rings at once upon a time. I don't remember what the final count on these gloves was. But we're definitely getting bigger today. Slowly. This is definitely only a hobby for those of us that have intense patience. Because this takes a long time. And in, oops, try that again, in and back out. And I could add extra rings as I'm doing this, but I want to keep track of exactly where I am, I'm just doing it one ring at a time.
Now, back in the old days, the blacksmiths used to do this. They would sit there and they would hammer and rivet each and every ring after it was closed. So I want you to imagine just how long that took. Just making the rings was an endeavor back then. And that is why the commoner did not have chainmail. But now we can make it out of paper clips. Anybody can have it. Yay! As long as you got patience. Incredible and slow. All from paper clips. Oops. Currently working on two shirts, but they're going to be much bigger weave, much bigger rings, so it goes a lot faster. Welcome, Luke. I hope I open it first. Welcome, Celeste. Well, I've been at this, I don't know, 10 minutes for this row. And I've gotten from here to here, just adding one row. So I'm going to say minimum 100 hours. Now, if I made it out of the bigger weave, eh, I could probably do it in about three. And unfortunately, you can't really sell these because... The way the chainmail works, at least for my gloves, is it's form-fitted. So it's specifically designed to fit my hand, and it's not really going to work for anyone else. you got to give it a little shimmy, get it on, and there it is. And then it is skin tight, but still flexible and durable. are going to have to make some more rings here shortly.
Somebody else wanted me to make a tie. I started that last night, but I'm still working on my two shirts as well. I like to multitask. I don't start a project and finish it. I typically go, you know, 10, 12 projects at a time. Just because if you do just one of these things, hours and hours and hours, you start to go a little nuts. So I like to mix it up. Ditch this other glove for a second. Somebody wanted me to make socks. Uh, they would be flexible, and they would breathe, but I don't know. If one of these rings came loose or something, you stepped on it. I think that could, that could end horribly. I have a feeling you'd be screaming. Definitely breathe, though. <laughs> How many have I bought, period? I don't know. 100, 200,000, somewhere along there. I usually buy them in bulk, 20, 30,000 at a time. From Staples. Now, you don't have to get paper clips at Staples, but paper clips look a little different, each manufacturer. So, for example, here's a sheet. You've got one color, two color, three color. Now, this was all made at the same time, and they're all oxidizing a little bit, so they're slowly getting darker, but they're getting darker at different rates. So, I like to stick with just one brand. And that's the other one. There we are. Yeah, you can tell the new rings from the old because the new rings are shiny. But they'll all eventually turn the same dark gray. And it makes it easier to know where you left off. Flip. Hey, we've almost completed one complete ring. Just about one more to go after this. So since y'all been watching, we put one extra ring all the way around. Now this is, I don't know, I have to count it again, but I believe it's 50-something rows. And then we just shimmy it back on. And I gotta decide if I'm gonna extend these fingers or not. Let's see, I'm thinking about doing it like a a half finger thing up to the knuckles and then cutting it off. I don't want to completely cover the fingers because I don't think you're going to have much dexterity with that on your finger. I mean, you could, but I'd be surprised. All right, let's go, let's go up here. Give it a little shake. And it's off. The other options for chainmail outfits that aren't form-fitting is to cinch them up with a cord or a thread or something like that. But maybe if I'm doing a shirt, but not for gloves. That would just be weird looking. All right, so what I'm going to do here is connect the two sides, but I should probably put the glove back on and figure out exactly where that is. Let's 
Let's see, right there. That's going to be my ring. Let's see if I can get this left handed. Probably should have done the right first. There we go. Not actually trying to make it look like anything. Just trying to keep it clipped there so I see where the spot is when I take the glove back off. Yeah, come on. Let's try it from the other side. Pinch. <laughs> of course, this would be the hard part. <laughs> All right, let me open the rings a little, a little bit smaller. No. I'm thinking we got a paper clip right here. Marked. So I'm marking the position where the fabric is going to go up and over. Okay. One more finger. Back side. Last one. Amen. All right, so now the gloves off, we're gonna go this spot here to this spot here. This one here, this one here, and this one here, and this one here. We're going to see if it works. I'm going to do this very simply. We're using the thumb hole as a reference point. First two. Be right there and right there. Okay. Line them up. And I'm just going to do a straight line. We can adjust the pattern once we have the measurements. Add an extra one. This is guesswork until you actually have it on again. You got to adjust accordingly. So we're doing is making a little chain. One, one, one. Open, closed. And last one. So I can avoid dropping these things for a change. Alright, so once we put the pattern in, that'll be for that finger. Take these markers off. Yeah, looks like I lost one.
Yep. Pinky finger, so that's okay. Do the other one. It is a pain. <laughs> so much of a pain it caused uh, nerve damage, but that's okay. Gotta hurt a little bit for the things you enjoy sometimes. Plus, you get the cool end result. And you get to tell people you made shit out of paper clips. <laughs> There's a million chain mail workers out there. There ain't nobody making it out of paper clips, though. I've had a couple people that have watched my channel and seen me make stuff out of these things and they've given it a shot themselves, more power to them, but a lot of people don't have the patience for it. <laughs> they eventually all get that urge to speed the process up a little bit, which I've been there. I used to work with regular wire. Very rarely I still go back to it. But there's something about finishing something when you've made it entirely out of paper clips. It's just a little bit more rewarding. And we're going to close that one. Again. Hook. And close. Take the marker off. So we should have two holes. I'm probably gonna have to extend those. I think that's gonna be a little short, but we'll try it. I gotta remark the pinky anyway. Spacing's actually pretty good. I still have to put the pattern in over it though, because then I have to go around the finger. But I'm gonna remark this pinky. Backside. Let's pick that ring. The shimmy to get it off. You know, growing pains along the way. First thing I ever made was sitting at work about 15 years ago, maybe 16, I don't know exactly when. But I did like most people did, and I attached a bunch of paper clips together, and I made a rope. And I said, gee, I wonder what else I can make. And I've been doing wire art for a little while, so I just used the basics there. It's a whole different ball game. But half the fun is figuring out the engineering on how to make this shit work. I mean, again, it's paper clips. <laughs> I've had much more failures than I've had successes, I'll tell you that much. But even on the failures, you still learn something. Chainmail was originally for it was a Dragon Steve about 12 years ago. And I needed something for wing texture. Figure out how to do that, and well, then I just got better and better at it. But it's still very slow.
first thing I ever made out of paper clips was the shopping cart. And unfortunately, a guy helped me move. <laughs> And he was very fascinated with that shopping cart, and so I gave it to him. But in hindsight, I wish I had kept that, since it was the first thing I ever made. That should be long enough. All right, the ring. It's a jump ring closer. Clip your ring, and it's got little grooves in it. So you push the ring in there, and it basically serves like an extra pair of pliers. You give it a little twist, and it opens. The one drawback is you can't get it into very tight spaces, and it will hurt your finger after a while. How do I have the patience for it? <laughs> Years of practice. And when I started doing this, I was a private security guard at the night shift, so I had nothing to do for hours and hours a night. My job was literally to wait around professionally. So patience kind of comes with my mentality. It's not for everyone. All right, measure the pinky. Missing a hole. I am missing a hole. What did I miss here? Man, I got three holes. No, I got four. Okay, there it is. Thought I was going crazy. Definitely a lot tighter with the fingers. I might need to pull out the thumb a little bit. That's where the specific measuring comes in. You get that, you're good. Okay, so four. Four holes. We are interconnected. I'm going to need to bring the pattern up on each of these at least to there. So let's say three rings. Little markers again. side. Ah, shut up, Grim. They fixed that game yet? Break it how? So we're going to do the same thing we did when we started this, except we're only going to do it in this one little spot. And then we're going to go vertical. Avoid dropping this thing. It gets harder and harder to work with the bigger it gets because it gets heavier. And my pliers do not have ridges to keep from scratching them. Try 
Try this again. That's a bad ring. Welcome all you new followers to the Paperclip Army. Now I'm not going to actually weave onto the finger support. That finger support's eventually going to disappear. There's plenty of uh, crafting recipes on my uh, tutorial vids. See, the thing about chainmail pieces is they never end. So it's not a question of how long have I been working on it. It's how many years have I been working on it. You just add to it as you go. You can always add, subtract, change patterns, etc., etc. And you don't have to use the same pattern throughout the same piece. You can combine them. But European 4-in-1 for this particular piece... Gets the job done. The belt down here, that is Byzantine. Still paperclip chainmail, but it's a little bit different pattern. Kind of sculpture you thinking about making? Paper clip. Straighten. That's how you make the rings. Very tiny metal rod. Wrap, wrap, wrap. Don't have to pinch off the ends. It's more work, but you can probably squeeze some extra two or three rings out of there. Of 
coil. Snips. Always a little bit of trash at the beginning. And that last one's a little oddly shaped, so we're going to scrap that one. But about nine rings per paper clip when you're doing them. At, I think it's two millimeter. I could be wrong on that. I don't know. These things actually, when I bought them, you can buy them for about five or six bucks on Amazon. Uh, you just come with a little thing that they screw into to help you hold them, but that just got in the way for me. I do wish they were still labeled, though. Or so. Have you seen Bob the Paperclip Dragon? I do have to do some work on his torso. Not really a human torso, but I can get the job done. So we're going to get rid of the marker here. We're not going to need it anymore. Oh, might as well reuse the ring. Anybody interested in getting into chainmail? Start with the four and one, and don't start with little tiny rings. <laughs> Same pattern, just bigger rings. You can see through it, but it's good to practice on. These are not as strong because they're bigger. The bigger the rings, the less durability they got. But it can still take some weight. Paper clips are steel. Once more, steel. Just don't mount them on the wall without proper support. I've done that mistake. So when you put tension on the foreign one, I'm going to hook this and pull it. You can see how it expands, so that's how you know where you're at on your rows. So that you make sure you're hooking them to the right spot. So I almost hooked that one to the wrong one. I think next weekend I'll finish up the chainmail tie. Somebody kept telling me to make a specific one from somebody, but I googled. I couldn't find them. So just make them own. Yeah, I'm going to leave that marker. 
All right, so in order to go around the finger, we're gonna have to make that piece separately and then attach it to this one. So, four in one basic tutorial. One ring open, like so. Four rings closed, that's why it's called the four in one. So, one open, four closed. Grab your open. Loop it through all four, I dropped one. Just like that, nothing to it. And close. Grab my pliers. All right, so now it's just a ring with four other rings on it. Tip of my finger here. And you're gonna spread it out like so. One, two, one, two, one ring in the middle. Grab another ring. Pinch that to keep it in place. Open. It's kind of hard to see with these little tiny rings, but we're going to try it anyway. Loop through two of them. I'm going to grab two more closed ones. <laughs> I am making chain mail with rings made out of paper clips. Specifically the rings for my gloves. So this used to be this. And that's all four in one is. Spread it out with your fingers, open, Hook it through those top two. Two more closed. Put it on the open. And close it up. So what we're doing here is making a ring that fits my finger. And then once I have that ring, I will attach that ring to the glove. Gonna need at least 10 of these. About a third of the way. Over and over and over again. Just get a little bit longer each time. These are those fresh ones I just cut.
So you're watching videos on these completed projects doesn't really give you the true appreciation of just how much work goes into them. <laughs> Four more. Getting low in rings now. But as long as I got paper clips, I can always make more. Pre closing them. I can do this one ring at a time, but I'm doing it three rings at a time. I ain't got time for the one ring method. Damn it. And yes, there are paperclip shards all over my house. Alright. Two... Do four and then measure again. Just lost that one. It's a very awkward angle to get this live feed up. Even with the stand, because you got to make it so it's clipped in there, but you can still see the screen. Measurement time. Yeah, it's not close all the way. Nope. See if we can get this finger attached to this glove today. Shouldn't be a whole lot of work after I get this ring made. Now it's going to be interesting. As I'm going towards the top of the hand vertically, probably going around the fingers horizontally. So it should give the pattern a nice little look. I 
I'm just making it bigger than it needs to be. I can always shrink it. It's easier to make it smaller than it is to increase. Plus, if it's too small, you can't get it on your hand, which causes a problem. I'm not going to attach it. <laughs> I'm not going to attach it while I'm wearing it. Definitely a little bit long, but I have to be able to squeeze the finger in there, so we're going to go ahead and attach it as it is. The objective here is to spread it out so that it looks the exact same. There we go. Okay. One last ring. Doesn't want to cooperate. One more time. And spread it open. Where it gets a little difficult. Not the time to drop it. There we go. All right. So that'll serve as the pointer finger on the glove. It's a little bit big, but not by much. That's the thing about this chain mail. You do not get a lot of wiggle room on there. So even though it is big, you got to be able to get your finger through it. So... So what we're going to do here, that's the thumb slot, and that's the pointer finger slot. We're going to take this, and we're going to graft it onto that. And I'm not even going to keep this thing I put on earlier. It was a good idea at the time, but we're not going to use it. Trial and error, my friends. That's how we got here. Nobody taught me how to do this. <laughs> I saw pictures, though. Most chainmail patterns I can look at and see exactly how they're put together. few exceptions. I tried doing one of those jelly cubes that somebody suggested. That one beat me the other night, but I'm going to try again. Alright, so this is what I was talking about. This is where it's going to get interesting. So this pattern is both European 4 and one but I'm going to do the hand vertical. You can see how the chain mill is moving. And I'm going to do this one horizontal. So vertical would line up. This could be horizontal. So i got to see how the hell this is going to connect. I've done it before, but it's been a while. I'm 
gonna start lined up with the thumb hole. All comes down to this first finger. Once you get the first finger on, it'll be fine. Come on. And my little paper clip. <laughs> uh, these little rings, man, I tell you. I could have done it with the bigger ones. It would have been a lot easier a lot, and a lot faster, but I like the look of the little tiny rings. Apparently, bread is full of carbs, y'all. Who knew? I did, because I lost 100 pounds on keto a couple years ago. Did not stick with it, though. Screw keto. It's horrible. Kept the weight off, though. Might need to use an expansion joint. Come on. Come on. Just got to get this first finger on there. All right. We're going to switch to an expansion ring here. Just so I don't play with this thing all day. So what that basically means is I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did before. I'm just going to use a slightly bigger ring for the middle ground. My four little rods are going to go one notch bigger. I think it's four millimeter. Much bigger. All right. Stay clipped, stay clipped. Ah. Almost there. Whew. All right. See, you can tell it's a... Bigger ring, obviously, so I'll change it out later, but it's on. <laughs> that's, that's the important part. I can always adjust. Definitely need to expand out this thumb, though. Fit fine without the fingers, but...
Now you're getting it. So then we're just going to weave around the finger to fill in the gap there. Probably going to have to do double or three, two or three right there. And then we'll replace that big one that just looks really weird. <laughs> do that for each finger. I think I'll go up to the knuckle on each. Definitely not going to go the whole finger, but... Oh, lordy. All right, y'all. I am going to call it a day and take a break and rest my hands a little bit. But you know where to find me. I'll be doing a live again tomorrow, but not chain mail. Tomorrow will be a paperclip figurine, specifically a skateboard. A little tiny one for a mouse. Don't ask. <laughs>